It is citrus fruit time on Inlandia Literary Journeys. I'm John Bender, Metro Editor of the Press Enterprise, with Orlando Ramirez, Editor of La Prensa. We'll be talking with Inlandia Literary Laureate Gail Brandeis and Inlandia Coordinator Katie Porter today about Orangelandia. So Gail, can you tell us what Orangelandia is all about? Sure. Um, Orangelandia is a project that came to me in a dream, actually. I had a dream one night that I had put together a book about oranges, and it was filled with poems and stories and essays and recipes about oranges. And I woke up and I thought, I need to do that. And so I am. <laughs> I shared with the Inlandia Publications Committee my dream, and they decided that we should go for it. And I thought, what a perfect way to celebrate our citrus heritage in a literary way, to bridge you know, our physical history and our literary history. And I'm excited by all the submissions that are starting to come in, mm -hmm. some great poems and essays, a couple recipes. And I think that it's going to be a really delicious collection. So how far along are you? Are you still accepting submissions? I'm still accepting submissions. Um, we're accepting submissions through the summer until August 31st, so people have time to send work in. And if people aren't confident with their literary abilities, a recipe is always an option. <laughs> Very good. So oranges, you know, that's, that's such a, a potent color. What does, uh, what does orange uh, signify for you? But for me, it's really about honoring the place because Riverside was really an orange town when it started out. And a lot of those orange groves are gone now, mm -hmm. but we can honor them through our words. And I miss them. I, I know, I've been out here since 86, and I came out to, to go to the University of Redlands, and I can remember just how thick the air was with the or scent of orange blossoms. And every once in a while you get a patch of that mm. here, but it's not as overpowering. You can't taste it as you go through town the way you used to be able to. And I, you know, I think it's worth um, celebrating in, in this book and also mourning the loss of the orange groves as well. So I think the, books will, the book will be an interesting mix of celebration and anger <laughs> and mm -hmm. sadness and you know just and lots of juicy stuff together. Katie, what was it like when uh, Gail came and pitched this idea? Was it a, an easy sell or did you think, oh my goodness, a dream idea? <laughs> well, I've known Gail a long time, so it wasn't a shock to know that it came from a dream. But it was definitely, um, so we were all at, at our publications committee meeting and she pitched this idea as an Inlandia Literary Laureate project. And it sounded amazing to think that, you know, she dreamed this up literally was um, quite interesting. And everybody was on board from the beginning and we we're really excited about the prospect. It'll be, as she says, a juicy anthology. <laughs> so a lot of really good work anchored in the region and, you know, oranges are, are very significant to Riverside. Now, at the turn of the century, Riverside had the highest per capita income in the country because of the citrus industry here. And that is a, a big part of our heritage. And as Gail mentioned, many of the orange groves are now gone. But we need to preserve that history and continue to talk about it. We no longer have the Orange Blossom Festival here. And I would like to see that come back. So. A lot of a lot of possibilities. And Inlandia is all about a sense of place, literature from this place. Absolutely. One of the things uh, when you talk about uh, the oranges, of course, it's just not Riverside. We're talking about all of the IE. And I, yes, yes. And of course, uh, no doubt you're you're asking for submissions from from everybody throughout Inlandia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I I think about Riverside. I think because I live right near the parent naval orange tree, which uh -huh. is just a couple of blocks from my house, and so I feel you know so rooted to, to that citrus heritage. But it, it's definitely throughout the Inland Empire, and we we welcome and encourage writing from the entire inland region. Now, would poems about grapefruit or lemons or <laughs> we tangerines be accepted? <laughs> I think we're going to stick to oranges this okay. time. Maybe okay. that'll be the sequel. Great. Well, for uh, Inlandia Literary Journeys, uh, this has been Orlando Ramirez. Uh, be sure to uh, read the column that is published every Tuesday in the Press Enterprise, as well as visit the, the blog on PE.com.
Welcome to Inlandia Literary Journeys. We've taken it on the road and we are at the Washington Parent Naval Orange Tree in Riverside, at the corner of Magnolia and Arlington. I'm here with Gail Brandeis and Katie Porter from Inlandia Institute. Gail, tell us about your uh, Orange Landia exercises you've been doing with real oranges. Nothing rhymes with orange. So this was my attempt to uh, prove otherwise. Orange. Harangues the orangutans in their strange grunge, expunging the old myth that nothing rhymes with. The phalanges offer bungee jumpers easier grips, fewer slips and lunges toward and forward, counter-challenging gravity's unhinging plunge. Opposable, thumbs aren't fringe, aren't for scrounging or lounging. R for rummaging and unwinding an orange rind. I am not unkind to suggest that what is left after disassembly, deconstruction, instruction pamphlets folded origami-like, is nothing more than an unraveling of the traveling circus that is us, de-evolving and disarranging and ranging in height and girth and color and breadth and breadth, a longitudinal lozenge lodging an orange hinge. The Press Enterprise of Geeky.com, I'm Metro Editor John Bender. 